Sorry for this video being a little late guys, but I was waiting on these to arrive. They're very applicable to this video. I didn't know they existed, but if they're awesome, it's gonna be a game changer. If they suck, I don't know, you'll have to see, but I really hope they don't suck because I think they're gonna help out a lot of people and you might be one of them. But first, let's go back in time. So it turns out the fern that we added to our houseplant aquarium in a previous video ended up not working out. So we're gonna remove it, we're gonna add a new houseplant that I know is gonna work really well. This way you can see the entire process of how to do it and how to get it to work. Ferns are just kinda tough, they have a little bit of a shallow root system, they typically don't grow fast, and what we want is actually the opposite. We want something that's gonna grow quickly and have a lot of roots. So I'm just gonna remove these ferns and get everything prepped. We need to get something that has a root system similar to the Mondo grass that we already have in here. We also have some pothos, a little cutting that's sitting in the corner, and that's exactly what we're gonna use. This is the perfect plant to do it. Millions of people have done this before, and it's gonna work out great. Luckily, I have a pothos plant already that's right next to the tank, and it's not doing too hot. It's got some yellow leaves, so we're gonna transform this plant into one that's gonna live in the tank right next to it. I was curious to see if the decay of the fern had any impact on the nitrate level in the tank, Turns out it didn't, which I was kind of shocked to see, but then when you think about it, the Mondo grass, that big healthy root system, it's really doing its job to pull out any nutrients that that dying fern would have given off. So the first thing you have to do is of course get rid of all the soil. So get yourself a bucket and pull all that soil off, get your fingers in there. Try not to pinch any of the roots too hard, kind of impossible. Once you get most of the soil off, you need to head over to the sink and give it the best wash that it's ever had. Pardon my super messy sink, but you can see me going through here, cleaning up the roots as best I can. We just wanna get as much of the soil off as possible. I put one of the cuttings in this jar just because I was curious to see how much decomp would happen and how much junk this jar would collect. We'll check back on it in a little bit. Now it's time to just find a spot for our pothos in the tank. So ideally, you know, you wanna have this positioned on a piece of wood like you see here. It's a creeping plant, it's gonna grow upwards. If you want it to grow up, it's gonna grow down if you leave it to do that. So as long as you have something that you can prop it up on nearby, you should be good to go. It's kind of hard to see from this angle, but you want to get it to where the roots are completely submerged in the water. You just want to try and avoid having too much foliage be underwater. A little bit isn't that big of a deal. A lot might not be too good. So we've been living with the new ONF light over our house plant tank setup here with the new plants for, I don't know, like a week or two now actually, and things are doing pretty good. Our new pothos that we added hasn't been dropping leaves like it was in the pot right here. And I actually went ahead and started a little prayer plant cutting as well. So hoping that takes off here soon and we can get this thing to really grow out and look even better. I think it's doing pretty good though as it is right now though. But back to this little light here, I think this thing is perfect for what I wanted it for. If you have a setup with a bookshelf and you want a low profile light, this is a really good option. Still really bummed out on the fact that we had to spend an extra $10 on the power supply and like eight or nine bucks for the rare earth magnets. But this thing is bulletproof now. Like this is how it should ship. Again, disappointed that it doesn't do that. And with those couple of add-on expenses, I'm at the price of one of these, which is you know close to $100. I'm definitely spending money compared to this guy, and it looks a million times better. So I don't know, maybe there's a, a product that's similar to this that will come with better magnets and a power supply, but I just don't know. I haven't spent the time to look on Amazon to see if there's anything better. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, you can change the color temperature by pressing this button over here so there's a couple different you can go with a warmer light kind of in the middle and then back to i guess the whitest light that pretty much matches what we're throwing out of the other onf lights and then you can also dim it and it'll save your dimming but but another expense you might need is a timer because this thing isn't app controlled you know if you're going to want it to turn on and off by itself you're going to need to get a timer which is going to be another ten dollars so just keep all those things in mind guys I also in the meantime threw in some lobelia from my good friend Will who has a plant company online. You guys can buy plants from him. It's aquariumplantlab.com. He grows out some of the nicest plants. He also sent me some java fern which he's known for that I've showed off to you before in other videos. Super healthy green stuff. Great rhizomes on that and then his other specialty is anubias. So super healthy plants. Root systems are looking beautiful. 
really recommend it. If you guys are looking for plants, check out my buddy Will. He's an awesome dude. Almost forgot to throw this in the video, but here we are probably three weeks since we put this pothos cutting in the jar and it's looking like there's not a bunch of junk in there, not a bunch of decomp from the roots or anything like that. Um, of course, the real thing, the, the nitrogen that might come off of this is what we really care about, not so much the physical debris. Let's pop a co-op test strip in here really quick and just double check though. 30 seconds later, no color. That means no nitrate, no nitrite either. So either we did a really good job of cleaning that off and or we just haven't had a lot of decomp out of this particular cutting. Kind of interesting, not super entertaining though. So I think that's pretty much all you need to know about adding a house plant like a pothos to an aquarium, guys. I hope I answered all the questions you might have if just in case you haven't done something like this before. There's not really anything else you guys need to do. Maybe your tank is close to a window and you can get natural light. You don't need to worry about having a plant light above it or anything like that. But there's also a lot of really good super low light plants that could work too, so you have some options. And spoiler alert, I found a really cool product that I don't have yet. Now we teleport to the whole reason why maybe you clicked on this video. Didn't know that these things even existed, but I went on to Etsy and found them. This is Potho carry and they 3D print some awesome terrestrial plant holders for your aquarium. So we have a few different things here. I got two of each of these. This one is for bamboo and this one right here is for like cuttings of pothos and it has this little slider that you, after you put your roots in, you slide it over there, it holds it and they just clip onto the side of your tank. If these things work out well, it's gonna solve a big problem for me, particularly with the bamboo. Not so much with the pothos. I mean, I usually have stuff that I can drape the vines over, like wood up out of the top of tanks, but I know not everybody does that. So you're kind of left with like, well, what do I, you know, where do I place my pothos vines? These could help a lot in that department, especially though with bamboo, it's like, where do you put it? Unless your tank is shallow enough to where you can have the stalks down in the substrate. If you don't have any better place to put them, maybe you're not using an HOB, you don't wanna put them in an HOB, you got hard media in there, sharp stuff that might irritate the roots, you're kinda of left with like, what do you do? This could solve that problem, we're about to find out if it does. Guys, these, these got me very excited. They work out just as I imagined they would, which is perfect, and I'm super stoked on them. So uh, let's break it down here. So this is the Potho Carry, kind of like the standard one. You guys saw me put the Pothos in there, put the little slider in front, and these things are in there. They're not going anywhere. You can pick it up, you can move it. This is definitely way better than doing something like this, or you just kind of lay the plant in the top. I can only get away with this because I don't have a lot of current here in the front of the tank, and it just doesn't look that good, right? So this is a huge W. I This is definitely link in description worthy. I'll put both of these in there so you guys can find these if you want on Etsy. Can't, I mean, I don't know what else to say. These things are awesome. We gotta talk about the bamboo though. So here I have three, of, I guess these are like standard uh, girth sizes of bamboo. Pardon my French, but uh, so I have three in this one, two in this one. It can comfortably fit two. You're gonna need more than one or else it's not gonna, you know, it's just gonna be loose. Um, but it looks like you can get up to three in this size. They might have a bigger size. I'm not 100% sure. This is, I think, really gonna make it because like I said, with bamboo, it's tough. Like you have to have the right size tank, but this way, if you wanna show off some bamboo, you can just put them in the back of your tank. So just resting it behind the fixture there and it looks good. Pardon all my floating plants, but as you can see, the roots of that bamboo has perfect access to everything. It's keeping most of the greenery up out of the water. And if we just step back and look at the tank, I mean, that's what you want. Imagine if you had 
six of these lining the back of the tank all filled up with bamboo, I think it would look awesome. And same goes for just the standard Pothos one. I know that this company does sell a few different things, so they sell like a mini version of this with just two slots, and they make them to where they're gonna fit on pretty much any tank. So of course on rimless tanks, I selected the option that was up to 0.5 inches. Might be kinda hard to get a focus. Maybe if I just do this, it would be better. You can see that there's two notches. So if your tank is really skinny, like my smaller aquariums, it's still gonna be able to fit on the edge. And then out here on these tanks, these are about half an inch, a little bit smaller. They still fit on perfectly. I don't know if they're gonna fit on my big tank though. This is pretty thick glass, so it looks like that's gonna be a limitation. But a big six foot rimless tank like that is fairly uncommon. I think I'll be able to manage using other methods. They do make even larger ones that are gonna fit on rim tanks too. So don't worry, just because you don't have a rimless tank, you're not out of luck. You're gonna be able to get something that's gonna fit on pretty much um, the standard size of all rim tanks as well. But yeah, I am super stoked on these. I think I probably said that a million times already. Highly, highly recommend. If you guys wanna get your hands on any of these Pothos Carry 3D printed things, I'll put, again, links in description so you can go check those out. They're a game changer. I think this might be the best way to display your house plants, other than, you know, if you have a, a special tank with wood coming out and you're going for that naturalistic feel there, I think this is a great option for most people. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. Again, I hope this answered any questions you might have. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.